Yeah. You could just press and say, you know, okay. All right, so yeah, Olive Morris, a voice unedited. Why am I doing this? I'm doing Olive Morris tribute today, 12th of July, which is the anniversary of her passing in 1979. Um, but a little bit before about before we go into about myself, for those of you who might not be familiar with who <laughs> who's who you're speaking with. Um, so yeah, I am uh, Michelle Asantua, and I will be your host for this evening and uh, this tribute. I want it to be as informal as it can be. I, this is just literally a formality of letting you know that I am a writer, publisher, and also an independent lecturer. And it's great to see some of my um, former and present and continuing um, students on this uh, Zoom. And these are some of the publications that I've done written and published via the independent uh, uh, publisher Way With Words. The latest publication is this one, which I've edited called In Search of Mami Wata. I should mention that there is a platform called Inclusive Indies that are doing a promotion of this book along with 40, 13 others. And it's really to promote independent publishers as well as authors who would otherwise not be given this kind of exposure so they so they're doing this in collaboration with bookshop.org so you can check it out we did myself and um, Nicole Rochelle Moore for those of you who remember us the twinning of us Donna I know you do and we did an Instagram live I'm trying to sound all hip with all that Instagram live last week which you can check out if you have uh, so interested but I'll be doing another one where I'll be talking with Danny Thompson who is included in this publication so I if any of you want just nab me and I'll send you details for that this is to mention some other things that are coming up this Friday I am busy this week and in the next few weeks <laughs> Yes, Sister Nzinga, thank you for being here. And I could see you shaking your head. And I know just why. So, um, yeah, so I'll be doing this, uh, How is African Spirituality Critical to Wellness? It's a repeat of one I've done before. I've done it a, a few times, but PASCF and others continue to ask me to do this uh, particular presentation, which I'm happy to do because it's so vital continuing you know the holistic need for wellness and so on and then of course I couldn't really do a tribute <laughs> to Olive Morris and the others that I've done previously without remembering what to do one for the other James Baldwin and just as I will be doing part reading uh, from a blog post that I shared which is just sitting online somewhere. No one really interacts with it. And I thought, well, you know, bring it to life um, in this format. I'll be doing the same for the spirit of James Baldwin where I wrote this blog post about for him, a tribute to him on the 3rd of August, although he uh, passed on the 2nd. Um, so this other one is, uh, I organize these rituals myself and some others each year in co connection with the Oshogbo River rituals or festival rather in Nigeria. So this one is on the 15th of August for those of you who haven't come to it. It's quite, it's quite a feel good, feel uplifted um, uh, session. And then, wow, this is immense. <laughs> so I'm also courtesy of Black History Walks and the Sarah uh, Parker Ramond Center at UCL will be speaking with the one, the only, the brilliant Dr. Erna Broadbury. I know some of you students have heard me just, just on and on and on <laughs> talking about Erna Broadbury. And I know I've asked you to read this particular publication, which some of you have shunned. <laughs> but anyway, she, though living in a remote part of Jamaica, I suppose I say that, but most, you know, was remote, yeah. Um, she will be, you know, availing herself to do this this uh, talk with me. So I'm really looking forward to that. If you haven't already done so, do do book and um, 
come to that. And then this is a repeat with, again, the one and only um, Dr. Beverly Bryan, uh, the Black Panther, and also one time friend of Olive Morris, who we will be speaking about today. And again, this one is just for those of you who aren't aware, I'm also rerunning this creative writing workshop on Afrofuturism. It was actually, I initiated this uh, earlier this year and it was very well received and well attended and I, 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 I loved it. <laughs> um, and I think the students must have loved it. Um, but anyway, I'm re repeating it. So yeah, that's a feast to things that you can consider that you know yours truly is doing over the next coming weeks. So a little bit about you guys, you know. So let's just take the heat and pressure off me somewhat. Um, where are you guys zooming in from? You can put that in the chat so we could see where you're where you're zooming in from. Um, whether where it is London, North London, South London, wheresoever it is, uh, do let me know. Um, it'd be really good to know. Um, I can see a Claudette that looks familiar, but I'm not sure. Greetings, Sister Karen. Haven't seen you for. Look at you all hiding up behind your uh, your cameras, though. All I can see is just names. You're know, scrolling through, and I can just see names. Um, okay, let me see where some of you are saying, can I even do this? By the way, I'm by myself, so bear with me. Well, you know where I'm from, around the corner from you. <laughs> I know, Germany, look, we've got someone from Germany. Brilliant. Birmingham, Ruth, or, or who, who you knew. Sandra, hello, East London, Deepest Devon, Michelle E. Prague, Czech Republic. Wow, Petra, welcome. Shaza is Birmingham, Attainda, North London. Um, where, where, let me see who else we've got. Huddersfield, Mark Morris, welcome. Cumbria, Pat, Pat Batterson, Batterson, yes. Kate MC um, from South London, Wembley, Natasha, Forest Hill, Pamela, Colchester. We've got a range of you, you're spread. You see, we wouldn't have been able to do this, but in the one hand, I really do miss face to face. Vanessa Green, you live in the US, in South Carolina, a region known for its Gula culture. Oh, thank you so much for joining. You are African-American cultural worker. That's brilliant. California, wow. Sister Jackie, you're on there, I didn't realize. Calm down, sorry, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm much more excited than I started, started this off at. And, um, I can see Shalane. I recognize some of your names. Anyway, Rose. Oh, welcome everybody. Brother Kwaku. Yeah, it's great to have you all. So yeah, uh, Sonia Williams, welcome as well and all others. So good. Finding Olive, finding me. Um, there's a bit of a backstory as to why I've ended up really having to fully and continuously engage with um, our sister Olive. Um, some years ago, which I will I will actually read in the blog, um, this picture was shared with me by another sister who felt at the time the way I had my hair. She said she had been meaning to tell me that I looked like Olive Morris. <clears throat> And it just so coincided with the, the time that I was, I think I was going to celebrate one of the one of the big birthdays. And um, so I actually printed this picture out and had it on my wall. And practically everybody asked me if this is me or where I was. Um, so ever since then, <laughs> I have been compelled, um, spiritually driven to do something around Olive. Morris and that was how the blog that I will share I will read for you came into being sometime after this whole um, episode of, of printing her out and just having her on my wall and actually being made aware of her because until then I wasn't aware so I'll share that with you but before I do that um, who is Olive Morris well I think most of you on here have some idea of who Olive Morris is 
it's a it's a very brief life but it's a very full life and um but you see where the the uh cartoonists i don't know who this cartoon is i just found it online where they've stamped her forehead rather uncharmingly with 1952 to 1979. Um, that was part of the issue when I was looking for Olive Morris is that online at the time, it would be like Olive Morris, just dates, just facts, just really kind of just cold. Um, so, so there was nothing really telling me much other than she lived, she, she did this activism you know, she died young, she died of cancer, blah, blah, blah. So I would eventually spiritually be just had this compulsion to go and literally find her. And what I'm right, what I've written here is that her grassroots work in the women's movements campaigning for squatters rights and anti racist activism ensure her legacy remains in the hearts and minds of those who remember her struggles. And this is me bigging it up, continue activist work in honor of her memory. Um, <clears throat> so this is a time for us really, this is a moment for us in my view to not only celebrate her, her activist life, but to also reflect on what we are doing. Because after a while, it's kind of a little bit grandiose and self gratifying to just look at this, this like how this, cartoon is showing Olive Morris born there, political activist, da, 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 what have you, that's what she did and yeah, clap, you know, but my thoughts are, and my well-considered view is that there should be more, there should be this continuation of this legacy because we are faced, as we all know, with ever more and increasing forms of uh, aggression against women against black people, against uh, the different uh, social classes, working class people um, and so on, that Olive Morris, I imagine, I can only imagine that had she been alive would have still been struggling just as we have the Althea Laquant Jones and we have the um, Queen Nzinga Asata before us here. We have the Sister Jackie, all of us, who are acknowledging um, our levels of activism continue to do, I'm sure which, um, Olive Morris would have continued doing. <clears throat> so then here is some of the biography uh, of her, for those of us who do not know. I found this picture again on this site, which is Lambeth Archive. I think this was some kind of fashion show that she was part of. And this is obviously Olive in the swanky, um, psychedelic <laughs> outfit, which I absolutely adore. <laughs> I was actually thinking, how can I make this? Um, anyway, yeah, so like many of us actually, it's like myself certainly, and I know, I know some of us on here, Olive Morris migrated to the UK to what they would call join her parents because the parents went ahead and then she came here to join her parents at nine. I've never really thought, I suppose they they were that, that age because I came at 10. Sister Nzinga, when did you come? Did you come with your parents or? No, I came when I was seven and a half. Oh, you were a bit early. Me and my sister, we traveled together. Yeah, that was somewhat earlier. But um, yes, but I came because I think it was about getting you into school as well um, at a certain point. Um, so anyway, she came at that age and these are some of the schools she attended. And again, Sister, um, Sister Nzinga, did you go to Lavender Hill as well? I did with Beverly Bryan, her sister Brenda, her sister Velma, all of us. And uh, Olive's good friend was Myrtle. Um, can't remember Myrtle's second name, but... Uh, yeah. Oh, thank you. That's why I love the fact that you're here as well. <laughs> See, it's live and direct <laughs> um, history that we're dealing with. Um, it, that we're told that she didn't complete formal, like, like her schooling, but then went on to do her degree, which again, I can relate to this. I also didn't, well, no, that's not true. I did finish, but I didn't have grades that were enough <laughs> that were anything 
particular and had to do some kind of shenanigans <laughs> to um, get into the, having that access to go to higher education. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, um, she was involved centrally to squatters campaign in the 1970s with her friend Liz O'B. I don't know whether Liz, I, I kind of imagine that she would be on. Um, she's not. I'm looking at that number 52 and I can't take my mind, my eyes off of it, the number of members that are, <laughs> that are on the call at the moment, because I've been seeing the number 52, um, which we, we can see the significance of up above. Um, anyway, Liz O'B set up uh, or, or was one of the members of a the Remembering Olive Collective, which I'll come to later on. Um, and um, she was a British Black Panther youth member joining there when she was 17. I mean, when I say it out like that, I'm just 17, you know, how do you do that? Can you think of 17 year olds like now? Like, it's just, I just find it phenomenal. Um, and then was one of the founding member of the um, Black Britain with um, Black, Briggs and Black Women's uh, Group, um, which is set up with Beverly Bryan um, and others in 1974, and was also a member of the Organization of Women of African and Asian Descent. The archives of these, by the way, are at the Brixton Cultural Archives for those of you who would like a bit more in-depth look at those. I, th I think obviously you can do that physically um, now. Um, They're open on Thursdays, Fridays and Saturdays from 11.30 till five. Thank you, Sister Nzinga, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it's amazing. Um, and then, yeah, and of course, so we have when she bought, was born, and then we have the day we're celebrating that, that marks her passing in July 1979 um, from, from cancer, ultimately. So <clears throat> this is the Sister Ya. Yes. Can I ask a question? Of course. I think it's Donna. Um, can I ask? Um, um, oh gosh. Sister Who's that Nzinga. In that? Yes, yes, Sister Nzinga, a question. Mm -hmm. Hi, Sister Makeda. Um, since it sounds like you knew her, can you just talk about some of the qualities she had? Why was she special? Um, um, what, what did you experience from her? Well, I didn't know her after we left school. Um, I only know of her political work um, from way, way after we left school, because I left school in 1969, um, which meant that Olive left probably a little later than me because she's a year younger. But certainly at school, I mean, it was it, we were at secondary school together, the usual um, mixing and the black power movement was heavy at the time so obviously we were all impacted by that in fact i was doing a talk yesterday where i was uh, speaking about being influenced by muhammad ali uh, james brown say it loud i'm black and i'm proud the the afros that were popular at the time and the dashiki so that was the kind of um uh, culture at that time uh, if you like it was a time of knowing yourself and getting inspiration from uh, the civil rights movement that was going on in the US. Uh, another good friend of Olive's is Gerlin Bean, who is an elder and was also a founding member of uh, OWAD and also the Black women's movement in Stockwell. So I just wanted to share that because Sister Gerlin often doesn't get the recognition for that work. And um, she was a tremendous activist at that time. Mm. Okay, thank you. That was really helpful. Yeah, thank you. And um, yeah, when we get to speak with um, Sister Beverly Bryant as well, and I hope you'll be able to join us for that too, um, Sister Inzinga, um, because I don't think you were there for the first time we did it, were you? No, I don't think so. Oh, yes, yeah, so that'd be really good to see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I met her up quite a lot in Jamaica because I was living there for a time. Um, ah, and, uh, yeah, we used to go up to Yui to uh, some of the gatherings.
Yeah, no, that's brilliant. That is really good. Right. Um, so, yeah, so, um, <clears throat> so Beverly Bryan in this article from the Guard Guardian, uh, which was in obviously fo following the whole Black Lives <laughs> Matter, um, a lot of the Black Panthers are being revived, if you like, um, to give voice to the historical as well as the, the impact and the contemporary. Uh, so Beverly Bryan was, uh, did this article for, uh, in The Guardian and um, <clears throat> um, she also talks about after finishing school that Bev Bev Sister Beverly Bryan went on to, to train in college, um, but um, she, she later would see um, Olive Morris. Um, she said that um, basically the realization that when she found out of the work or the activism that Olive Morris was involved with, she also joined the Black Panther Party um, in 1969. Um, and this was initiated because, uh, let's see if I've got a slide for this. Um, yeah. This is, the, yeah, this is talking about, um, this is Olive, uh, sorry, this is Sister uh, Beverly giving her account of the, the personal, um, you know, kind of courage that she encountered and experienced with um, uh, Olive Morris. <clears throat> I'm distracted because my internet connection is unstable. But anyway, yeah, she was saying she was quite um, someone that she's quite fierce. And so she really looked up to her. Um, for that and thought it was, you know, it, it was a given that her, if she could take a stand in the way she did, then why, why wouldn't <laughs> um, Beverly as well? Um, but prior to that, yeah, as it says here, Beverly Bryan was actually the prefect who was <laughs> marking down rebels <laughs> in, the, uh, in the school. Um, <clears throat> but it was the intervention by Olive when this Nigerian diplomat called Clement Gomwalk was being arrested for driving his own car, which a story we can all, we can all bear witness to. He was being hounded by the police. Um, Olive intervened. She was assaulted brutally by the police. Um, and arrested, um, let's move on to see. Yeah, she was arrested. <laughs> I've written that assaulted by pigs because really that's actually what it was. And then she, this initiated her activism. They assaulted her because really, well, they assault, assaulted her anyway because she was intervening. But in the brutal way they did was because she was dressed in men's you know, clothing. So they assumed <laughs> she was um, a man, a young man. So this is from another article where it talks about this uh, violation. She was beaten because she was dressed in men's clothes and had short hair, very short hair. The police at that point believed she was a young man. One of them saying when challenged, she ain't no girl. I'm actually not going to read all of this because then I'll have to say that word that comes into this. Uh, Morris is arrested and threatened with rape while in the police custody. I've never actually seen this level of the detail, um, but I got this from this um, site earlier. Um, and she's talking here about, you know, the assault. So we hear about the, the, the and I suppose this is why you always read that she was brutally assaulted, because I was wondering why it kept referring to the brutality of the assault. Um, and then this is, you could read the rest for yourself. And um, I will later attest to the fact that when I went to find her at the, um, the archives, the Lambeth archives, I saw this picture and there were a couple of others, I think, where you could see she had been beaten up um, having stayed a night in that um, cell. But in any case, this was the uh, impetus not only was she arrested, look, she was fined as well. Um, so this, this, I mean, you could imagine she, at the time she was only 17 as well. 
And it was that 17 year old who intervened that would then be recruited by the Black Panthers to, to come involved. Because if you're gonna, if you're, if you're brave enough, you know, you're brave, right? Um, I wonder about the other people who were around watching what happened to them anyway. Um, yeah, so, and obviously she's also um, a women's advocate, as we said, um, a feminist, um, and very much, um, very much trying to um, influence women's rights, um, black women's rights in the UK. And uh, the, the Voice newspaper cited as saying that she was one of the ones that contributed to this movement along obviously with others um but yeah i love this quotation because it 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 brings everything together rather than isolating the feminism from the um the squatters rights activists the community activists it's a total um stance against all forms of oppression all forms of domination, um, which this reflects. <clears throat> so what else is this say? All right, okay, and this is, um, I love this picture. I haven't been able to find out what exactly it's doing, but I thought that whilst I am reading this blog post that I had shared, you could write your captions <laughs> what she might possibly <laughs> be saying um to this who oh, is it is it is it a cop is it a landlord what is it? it looks like a landlord but whoever this aggressor is what might this young fierce um sister be saying to him from your perspective all right so this post that I did, I actually shared it on, on the 15th of March, 2011. Oh, is that your birthday? Whose birthday is that? Why did I, why did I react that way? It's Sorry, what was the birthday? The 15th of March. Oh, that's my birthday, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you remembered. <laughs> yes, 15th of March. I shared this post in 2011. Look at that. I just love the way uh, these things uh, report. And I didn't realise that um, there was um, the Olive Morris House was commemorated in uh, on March the 14th as well um, when I was sharing it. There was just these things that were happening um, organically. Anyway, so I call this Olive Morris, a voice unedited. Certain admissions are woefully embarrassing, but the honest heart must attend to them in some way or other. Must be nearly two years now that I've had a picture in my house of a sister I hadn't until now attempted to know. So why is she on my kitchen wall? She must have put herself there at least spiritually. I did the physical action of printing it out along with other pictures of black icons in the 70s and laminating it. This was for a decades party I was having. After the party, I kept her there, not through any kind of laziness, she just seemed to belong. She's smiling beneath Marsha Hunt, big fro, lil fro, warriors, is the caption I wrote. I didn't even find the picture myself. A sister emailed it to me saying, I had to forward this to you as Olive Morris and you so resemble. It's a good resemblance to have as she was a warrior sister. My reply was, thanks, my skin's crawling. Spirit knows the significance of vanity on a feeble conscience but it's always a matter of time before the divine purpose of the connection is manifested. I didn't take time to look for Olive. It seemed enough to parade her on my wall, utterly pleased at the physical resemblance. People would ask confusedly if it was me they were seeing. And I wouldn't properly reply, I'd giggle, idiotically almost, basking in something I didn't comprehend. Who was this woman? If they asked me her name, I really couldn't say. 
I didn't feel embarrassed that I couldn't explain who she was, that I didn't consciously register her name after being forwarded her, the email. The resemblance seemed to me to say all that was necessary. How shamefully wrong that was. After the large shout, which privileged three brothers, it's as if I felt her spirit straining for some of that or the same. What about me, she was saying, don't forget me. The picture on the wall began to take on new life, pressuring me to look for, not simply at Olive. The purpose of those two years hence connection was manifesting. How many times had I driven past that building in Brixton where she has been memorialized? But on discovering this, something still bugged me about how little she is known. I don't know if I'm saying that the building isn't enough or whether there's something too silent about it. Maybe something missable as well as missing there. Online entries about her note unspecific birth and death dates, 1959 to 1979, 1952 rather, to 1979. But when exactly? I needed, for some yet unfathomable reason, to know the precise dates. I kept searching, but every entry was thus limited and it annoyed me. I know the annoyance was probably more at myself for my belated interest. I determined to visit the Lambeth archives where I was sure I could find her exact dates of birth and death. That place, which houses archival material about Olive, was snaky to find. My heart was drumming as I drove round and round, knowing with each mistaken turn, no sat nap in my beat up banger at the time, that I was so very near to finding Olive. Once there, I was overcome with that satisfied feeling of achievement. The effort mattered. Two boxes, one they couldn't find without some tumbling up, held images and recordings of a life briefly lived. My eyes lit up, this seems pathetic now, when I noticed a passport because I was determined more than anything to know how specifically brief that life was. Sorry. <laughs> Let your tears flow. Just take your time. Olive, Elaine Morris was born on the 26th of June. 1952 and died 12th July 1979 after completing almost exactly 27 years of life. I breathed. The life was brief but full. It expresses that utmost urgency of spirit that is beyond the weights of gravity. <clears throat> she was on spirit side from time and so utterly fearless. That's what we see in that barefooted feature, some spirit up in the face of human oppressors. The warrior weapon is her voice, an unbounded one whose pitch and dramatic soprano held accented Jamaican notes. The adorable lyrics of that line crucially said everything about what she meant. This is a poem that I'll read after. How do I know how she sounded? It is simply that the loudspeaker is still sounding. Stop police Nazi activity in Brixton. 
shouts from one of her flyers. The leaflet highlighted the systematic harassment of black youths in Brixton following one of the many Notting Hill carnival riots. That harassment persists in differing signs. One of the photos in the archive, and there are so many that depict snatches of a full on activist's life, is particularly grievous. It is 1969. Olive looks mashed up. You can see the ashy skin, even though the image is black and white. You notice still a troubling smirk escaping despite the ordeal. She looks much older than 17. The picture was taken at King's College Hospital following a police assault. At the back, she found it necessary to inscribe, taken at about 10 p.m. on 15th of November 1969, after the police had beating me up. You read the verb correctly. That's exactly what she wrote, beating. Why struggle to find the past tense of a verb for which the action is perpetual? Yet there's an image that delighted me, made me smile someplace surreal. One where Olive <clears throat> is up in the face of two policemen. The veins in her neck are straining as if she's attached to invisible chains pulling her in opposite direction. A white woman is watching as others are stunned, silenced by this warrior's unrelenting will. On the 14th of March, 1986, she was honored with the naming of Olive, Olive Morris House in Brixton. You will have passed it many times, although it's now changed, of course. But I don't think that if you're now compelled, as she has made me to really look for her, that's where you need to begin. Spirits don't remain where they're buried in cold coffins and tombs. Memorial buildings tell you that they've once lived, but hardly say for what and how. And if you're really curious to know why so brief the life and for what purpose it came, perhaps you'll have to be ready like Elisha or Elisha when Elijah was mystically caught up and had to leave behind the prophetic mantle. So the poem I wrote says, just look at you barefoot and free, commanding me to see your full face of pride, demanding that I stand beside you chanting. The red brick knows no way to drum your dreams and anguish and seems so silent, though a troubling pitch of noise screams, unfinished business, rippling my miserable mediocrity, compelling me to rise from sleep's wanton inactivity, to talk much less, and for God's sake, do something. That's it. Sorry, that ends my reading. <laughs> wow. Um, uh, sorry, I that surprises me, but it shouldn't. Could we go <laughs> to the chat so that I could see what you have been written? Sister and Zinga, did you want to speak? Uh, no, I just um, was going to say there's no. Oh, she muted herself. Okay. Um, oh, right. Thank you, Sandra. Sister Sandra. Um, oh, sorry. I'm just seeing all your comments. When, when I was, um, yeah. But thank you. Yeah. So. This is, um, as I said, this is kind of like informal. I don't know if any of you wrote or want to say what you what you would be saying <laughs> in response to this caption here. I mean, rather this, this image here. All right, okay. This is Carmel Camerill. No, you need to watch what you're saying. Carmel, are you able to unmute yourself and say it? Because I just can't do it in your- No. You need to watch what you're saying. 
<laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> that's brilliant. Okay, uh, let's see if there's any. Sonia. All right, okay, I see what you're saying. Thank you. Um, Oh, um, Carmel Cameron asking if did she get cancer as a result of the police beatings? I can't say that. That would be just pure speculation. Um, so I don't know. Um, okay, yeah. Can I just say one thing in terms of her? You can being, say many things. Oh, okay. But just in terms of her being a Black Panther mm -hmm. and to acknowledge our sister Sasha Johnson that was shot, who was also the head of one of the Black Panther movements in this country. Mm. So, yeah. What, what, what happened to her sister? How did she get shot? No, oh, um, she was at a party in, um, I'm not sure of the actual location and um, some young men came into the party and, and shot her in the head. Oh, wow. She's still in King's College Hospital at this time. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to just thinking about some of these um, this is in terms of her legacy, which, um, I mean, you know, there, there are ways that she is remembered, um, several ways in which she's remembered. This is from a sister, an artist who created this exhibition. Are you aware of her sister, Nzinga? Because this was also in conjunction with the Black Cultural Archives, I believe. No, I've never seen it. Um... But oh. they also had some um, um, cardboard, um, what would I call it, like stands at the archives reflecting Olive um, for about a month or more uh, yes. before the lockdown. Um, yeah, this was, I think, the same sister's work. So she had, she had a group of uh, women who used art to, you know, activist art for healing and you know therapy and so on, but it was also because it it was um like visual art, but it was scriptural, yeah. So that would have been at the archive. But if you if you actually look for Lynette Kamala on um, online, you will see uh, there is the Black Cultural Archives has it virtually. So she she talks um, about her project that she did. So look it up, and she actually reads it as well, which is which is useful and helpful um, for those who need that. And um, so yeah, there there have been other Google Doodles as they're called. Um, I think there was one in two thousand and fifteen, and then obviously this would have been one um, last year. I mean, when you really think about it, it's quite interesting um, the way these things come around because Google can really do anybody at on no particular uh, dates. But um, so there is this uh, push and drive, which speak to that force of Olive Morris, the force of just, just remember, remember me. Everything she did, it seemed was so much that it would be hard for one to really forget her. Um, and so she she is remembered by Sister Kalamala. This is I like this this exhibition, and I really do recommend you go and do it because she some of it was funded that she did, but she also went to Jamaica. Um, I believe she might have gone to either her locality or where her parents are from, or where Olive Morris is from. I can't quite remember, but this the, she went to these schools and um, self funded this uh, project and taught them about Olive Morris, which I just think is brilliant because as we know, uh, a lot of times our, the, the strength and the, the memory of these activism that, this activism that we do in these spaces aren't really um, remembered in the, the spaces we, we come from, you know? Um, so it's quite good that she, 
she did this and you'll see it and you'll see what the how the, the students are responding and yeah the olive morris house lambeth 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 <laughs> what happened here this is a process i mean it's it's the, the irony of this is just incredible somebody who was campaigning for squatters rights has a building named after them in honor of them by the council acknowledging their community work and then what happens 20 10 years however many years later it's turned into well it's no longer on it that, that it's still there but it's no longer is it re, been renamed um Satin Zinger? It's not called on. I haven't seen a new name on the outside uh, because they refurbished it thoroughly and it looks like a totally different building. I don't know why they uh, renamed it, to be honest. Um, yeah. Can, can I come in, Sister Michelle? Quaker? No, it's been all, it's been oh, all knocked down. Quaker. Yes, <laughs> greetings. It's been knocked down and a new building is coming in its place. And the reason why there's going to be a little monument to Olive Morris, but they did not want to feature it because the, it's not going to be social housing. So the, the name, and they, there were some plaques and, and stuff inside the building by the doorway, that will be put on a suitable uh, location in Lambeth, according to Councillor Sonia Winifred. So that building is gone. This building is gone. It's a new building that's taken its place. Yeah, I thank you so much for that, Brother Kweku. I have seen the new building, and yeah, I mean, where this was clearly written as Olive Morris House, that new building, you, you you wouldn't even, it's like an erasure, you wouldn't know that that was there. So thank you for telling us that they planned to put the, the stuff that was inside um, elsewhere, but, you know, um, that's, that's a piece of history there that's, um, or rather not even history, but uh, memorial, commemoration that's gone. And I do believe there, there would have obviously been campaigns behind the scenes to, to stop that from happening. But you're dealing with, again, ironically, capitalist structure that would have uh, prevailed over Lambeth's earlier decision. This here is that I don't know what year it was, but she was also um, on the Brixton, uh, the one pound, um, Brixton pound. And um, and then the, this is to say that a, the group I mentioned, I was hoping that one of, because I know a former student was part of this group and I was hoping that she would come be here to talk about what their, their work is and whether they are still going. Because one of the reasons why I, I did this is because I didn't actually see online whether there was another something like this um, for Olive Morris, uh, but I will come to the fact that she did have, there is a Nubian Jack plaque in her honor, which I don't know how well that was attended, but certainly the uh, Remembrance Olive Collective members were there along with members of her family and so on. So her family is still active, um, still around. Um, but yeah, so <clears throat> this is a little bit just just of, of that memorial. Let me see if it will play because it's, I think it has to go online. The volume isn't great. Oh. All right, I know what happened. It's because I, when I shared this, I didn't tell it um, to share the sound. So did anyone hear anything or nothing? You heard nothing. Okay, fine. Let's, no. let, let's hear it's it. A... No, I can't hear it. Okay, no, no, I'll start it again. Um, Could you put the, um, the, the web address in the chat and we can listen to it on our own? Well, it's only, this is literally 30 seconds. <laughs> Yeah, um, so, I, I, but I will stop sharing basically and share it again. That's all that happened is that I didn't share it with the sound on. So I'm gonna do that now.
The community in Brixton has been remembering political activist Olive yes. Morris on what would have been her 69th birthday by commemorating her with a blue plaque. It was placed wow. on a property in Talma Road where Jamaican-born Olive once lived. She campaigned for racial, gender and social equality and helped found the Brixton Black Women's Group, one of the nation's first networks of its kind. She died in 1979 at the age of just 27. Yeah, um, I didn't actually know that that was happening. Um, did anyone else in the in the community, Sister Jackie? I, a newbie and Jack rang me on the day, which I was already totally busy, yeah. asking me to come and do the libation, which I just couldn't do. So right. yeah, I did. I I really didn't know that that was happening, but um, it's there. You can go and see it. I noticed that there are trying to have this Olive Morris Day, somebody, I believe it might be the Remembering Olive Morris um, Collective again. Uh, let me just see what's the chat. Yeah, absolutely, um, Sonia Williams, I agree. Um, getting round to memorializing <laughs> as many of us as you can in this way. So yeah, so that's one form that is, and this was only recently, of course. The community. Okay, and then so I wanted us to be a little bit more proactive in, as I said at the beginning, in, in what we do. I know this doesn't even really speak to <laughs> a number of you already, like just burnt out from being active. But um, I think it's interesting in terms of the best way. Yes, there are buildings. <laughs> and um, plaques and so on to remember Olive Morris, but I wondered whether we could all make a commitment to do some, some more, go back to that 17 year old um, that we met at the beginning and consider ourselves still able, you know, we didn't, um, we didn't succumb to that brevity of life, but in that brevity, as we've seen with a, a number of our activists, in that short spell of time that they were there, they were doing a lot of stuff. And so I, I reckon that if more of us were to spread our wings a little bit and um, you know, commit to some form of activism, then perhaps we will start to see the changes and the transformations in our societies and in our lives as we as we want, because clearly that was why Olive Morris was being active. She saw oppression, she saw the challenges, she saw repression, she saw the need to take, take a stand and she did so. So yeah, I wanted you to consider whether you are involved in community work or any form of activism. And you know, if you are, um, what form does that take? And how do you, how do you do, how do you incorporate that in your, in your life? How, you know, whether it's in your workplace or whether it's in your, amongst your family, your friends, your, your, your networks. And, you know, how, what are the ways that you disrupt or challenge anything, you know, any form of discrimination? How do you do that? I know, for example, that we have, you know, not mention any names, <laughs> just do it as a singer again, um, we might write letters, <laughs> not mentioning any um, names. Sister um, Jackie, we might set up an organization or be part of an organization. Um, I'll tell you, I had a letter in the Gleaner this Friday. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. And what was that letter about, Sister? And it was about uh, an MP from Westmoreland in Jamaica who was videoed beating up his partner in a car. It was all over social media. And uh, he was refusing to remove himself. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe the prime minister should have sacked him, but he hasn't done so. So that was the essence of the letter, challenging that out of order behavior and its acceptability in a mm. society that already has more than its share of violence. <sighs> thank you so much for sharing that. Um, unfortunately, yes, you didn't have to share it, but thank you so much for doing that and just to give it us to inspiring us to to do the same. Um, I mean, and I, I do commend you for continuing those letters. I mean, I think I burnt out like about 10 years ago uh, writing some of them. I mean, not quite, but you know, um, a lot of them seem to be written in my head. They're, uh, they're uh, insurmountable, right? Um, 
And this was just really for you to consider, are you aware of the many other ways that Olive Morris is remembered? I know there is an award um, that, that's also named after her, but I, this is kind of like trying to drive you to, to go in and looking for your version of Olive Morris and see what you can discover in the same way that I did that windy, windy mission on a Saturday afternoon, going to look for her as well. And um, this uh, decolonizing the curriculum references to something that Sister Beverly Bryan mentioned about, you know, obviously that's something, that's, that's a new term that we're associated with now, but that they were doing that back in the day, you know, Sister Beverly was doing that in her teaching um, way back in the in the in the seventies, and and so, yeah. What does that mean for you? For you to consider. Um, also, how do you ensure, or can you even, the younger generation are made aware of activists like Olive Morris? Um, because when we say the younger generation, she of course wasn't is their generation. <laughs> you know, she's a twenty seven. She is a twenty seven year old. You know. <laughs> She is at 27. Um, and she started at 17. So, you know, how do we inspire? Because I've seen some things on, on like on like clips on YouTube, which you can look for. You could just put in Olive Morris and see what intriguing and curious things you, you, you can find on there. Um, I found she's quite um, well received in America. I, I there, there are some American voices that are telling us about her, which is quite interesting. And um, there's another one where this, this school curriculum uh, has a kind of a cartoon version. But, you know, when you're looking at it, you're like, oh, this looks twee, isn't it? It looks very, this is Olive Morris, you know, this is, she's this twee and, you know, what she did was she fought against the racism. You know, it's just the way this narrative comes across. And I think what I'm saying is that this is going to be about us doing the work because the systems are going to portray it in the way and in the voice that they want it. But if we're going to honor this voice of, of Olive Morris that I, I, I call unedited, that's what we need to do. It's, we, we don't edit it in a way that sanitizes the level of her activism and the quality of it and the, the drive, that strain in her neck and that power um, that we can feel when we think about her and that I certainly just felt when I was reading. And this is, of course, is to just consider how will you remember Olive Morris on the 26th of June or the 12th of July every year. And so this is another, um, this is the Remembering Olive Collective. And I, I again, I thought someone, one of them would be here to represent um, because this is in June, this is in 2019, which means that there is still some kind of movements. I think they were at that time trying to, to, to challenge this demolition of the, or refurbishment, whatever they want to call it, of the Olive Morris House. I think there was, I think maybe Kweku might, Brother Kweku might have mentioned it about this, installation of, a, of, of some kind of other memorial thing and there was some money that had gone in to it. I, I was hoping somebody would be able to tell to, to go into it a bit more I, and I wanted to know where are, we are at with this. So anyway this is a task that maybe if you're so interested you could follow through with um, the Olive Morris Collective. Um, the memorial must not be lost. This is not the 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 house, but something else, I believe. Um, they were trying to campaign and for Lambeth to commit to funding, which apparently they had agreed to, but might seem to have stepped back on that agreement. That's it, thank you very much. We can have a little conversation, um, a little discussion. I will just stop sharing the screen so we can see all see each other and can just share our thoughts. I just want to say though, uh, Michelle, and most of us who are already activists know that there's so much work that has been done by women and so little of it is out there for the world to know about. Um, 
Um, yeah, so that, that, I mean, there's a book called Set the World on Fire um, by a sister called Keisha N. Blaine, which highlights so many nationalist Pan-Africanist women in the last century who were out there as, you know, real warrior activists. And I mean, I didn't even know about the book. Uh, somebody, meant, Brother Shakara, in fact, mentioned it to me and I, I got it. And yet there's just so much. Um, so there's a lot of learning to be done about our women's contributions. Mm. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, set the world on fire. Totally agree. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I, I think what struck me as you spoke, Sister Yaa, and um, thank you for your tears, because often as women, although we are told how much women are allowed to cry, mm -hmm. I don't think that that applies to black women. <laughs> and, you know, because we are supposed to be so rock hard that nothing penetrates us or touches us. So I am pleased to welcome your tears and have you not hold them back. But in the same, what, what really touched me was that the demolition, which is to devastate, to knock down, to obliterate, and then on the other hand, we have refurbishment. And for me, there's a very cultural message in that because who we are is supposed to be demolished so that who we, the system, thinks we are supposed to be is that refurbishment. So there isn't really a space that we can claim, hence Olive's wagging finger, eat all that time and our fingers are still being wagged because they're people who still believe that their refurbishment is more important for us than our holding on to the power of who we are. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic yeah. analysis. Brilliant. This is yeah. Anyone else want to share? I'll have a look in the chat to see what you were um, perhaps writing. Because it, it, in terms of some of the questions as well that I was, I had put there prompt. I think um, one of the things I really like about um, the way that you share information, um, Sister Ya, is that you always weave things together with how spirit is intervening in your life and how, how it's, and, 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 and which gives people an opportunity to own that for themselves. Um, the way, and so that the fact that you, you had the tears at a very poignant moment, because you were saying you really didn't really know about her. It, it, it was like, it went beyond the rhetoric. It went beyond the rhetoric. It, 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 it was, it was, um, showing a kind of intervention of spirit in that moment that you were crying. That, 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 that's the way that I saw it happening. Thank you, Sister McKenna. It's still kind of there, so I'm trying to just hold it down. <laughs> Come on, you can't hold it down. I, yeah, because um, I'm just reading, a, I'm just going back on some of the, the, the message. We'll, we'll continue, obviously. The thing is, but you wrote this book on mommy water. You've already surrendered. You've already committed yourself. They say you're in it now. <laughs> yeah. wow. Continue to do your work. We're behind you now. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, some Sandra Agard is talking about Saturn. Okay, let me go all the way up. Um, Ocean, Ka all right, Karen Brooke. Hello, sister, greetings. Um, greetings. Ocean Education. What about it? Wonderful. Asked, I just see that it's written there, so I'm oh. coming in to try and find out. Well, it was after I did the course with you, actually. Mm -hmm. And I always remember at the end of the course, you said, OK, now you've got to go and do something with the information that you've learned. And you were so inspiring. I was previously working with black prisoners um, around developing their self-esteem and their confidence, etc. And so I just looked at a way kind of how could I influence them before they got to prison. So I'm now working with primary schools, 
um, in West London, I was up in Yorkshire, um, Birmingham. So I trained the teachers around um, what decolonizing means, um, decolonizing their minds. I do some training as well and on different subjects. And I actually work on the school curriculums and going through it. And I was sort of putting in black history where it is necessary and where it is missing. So, yeah. Oh. Wow, Karen, Karen, I'm just like, I didn't even know you were doing all of that. Sister, you kept, maybe I did, should I have known? How could I, did you ever tell me this before? I didn't know, maybe I should. No, no, I haven't told you before. The last time my company was working with prisons, but with, with COVID, it meant I could no longer go into prison. So you have mm. to do a rethink. Mm. Um, I've done, Danny's done some work with me. He did a really good session mm. around decolonizing math. Yes. Uh, yes, I've, to some I've, math teachers in a high school, uh, which is really interesting. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, I was, I'm aware yeah. that Danny's done some stuff with you, so that's that's really that's great, mm. wonderful uh, initiative. Yeah. Um. Okay. Thank you. Good, good sister, yeah, you. Sister Sheba has her hands up. Sister Sheba. Oh, greetings, Sister Sheba. Greetings, Sister. Jane. Greetings, everyone. I just wanted to um, thank everyone. I give thanks to the fact that even though we're stranded out here in the wilderness, we have enough of our spiritual heritage and our love and oneness that we can come together when we need to come together. And honoring a sister in like ours in our, amongst our local Brixton community is obviously very important. So I give thanks that the Sistrin took the initiative to put it together. And even though I have 10 million things I needed to be doing this evening, <laughs> I couldn't miss this. Oh. Because um, I do feel Olive Spirit running about Brixton more time. You know, there's things I see. And certainly when I passed Olive Murray's house, I always thought about her. Mm. And because I'm a, I'm a researcher, I love to research and I love to research what our people do. So I've always looked and seen the, the wording and the literature. And so being in the community where she moved, where she did her thing, I've always felt her spirit. And that's why coming to this gathering today was important to me. And I think it's important that us as local Brixtonians and of people who come from the islands who are stranded out here, in exile, that we remember our heroes and our activists and our warriors, you know? So I think each year this will become something that will grow and grow. Mm -hmm. And I think also, although we're locked down, we're supposed to be in a COVID pandemic, it's good that we're so resourceful that we find a way. So for everyone here tonight, well done and give thanks. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Sheba. That's lovely. It's lovely to see you as well and to see everyone. And Sister Jackie, it's been a while I haven't seen you. I know, I saw th thought that when I saw your name. Yeah, oh, wow. it's been a while. Glad to see you. And you too, beautiful. Yes, thanks. Oh, wonderful. You look just so great. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, Sister Sandra, you're saying the trouble is what we have done is not fully documented. Uh, yeah. We do need to start doing it. And there is a long history, as you're saying, of struggle in politics, arts and culture and creativity, just this wide berth. And it, a lot of it takes time. A lot of it takes resourcing and resources. And so those of us who, you know, have have that time um, just need to just do it. I mean, just do something. Some of our skills, you know, there's no point in giving away our, all our skills to the the man <laughs> or the woman, <laughs> like <laughs> save some <laughs> and do some for for our for our people. As I said, if, if the more of us do a little bit, you know, it will ease the burden of those on those who do so much. You know, yeah, sister Nzinga, you end up. Yeah, um, I raised my hand because um, just on the point that you were saying about us having so much information. Um, it, it's one of my my beefs is to try and get people to begin to plan what is going to happen to their information, because the BCA is small. It can't hold 
all of the archival material that we are all accumulating. I mean, I have a seven box deposit in the BCA and I could fill another seven, maybe even more in my house now. So I'm sure many of us have masses of literature, a life's collection of things. So just, you know, for people to begin to think about these things, because uh, I can remember Professor Tony Martin saying when he was writing the book about Amy Ashwood Garvey, that he arrived at a house in London just in time to rescue some material from the skip, which is where it was going, about her life. So um, that's really important. Mm. Oh. Wow. Thank you so much, Justine Zinga, for that. And the sister who, who talked about working um, in, the, um, in the prisons and working with education, put her details in the chat. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yes, I've has. done that already. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, it should be done. Thank you. Brother thank Kwe you. Who is sharing this film, <laughs> which is a different notebook connected, thank you. Um, He's saying it's a different note, but dealing with women with UK and um, is it Jamaican commentators? Is this, there's a screening um, on July the 22nd between six and nine. Queens of Sound, women and reggae. Mm. I like that you hashtag sexism, hashtag faith. <laughs> um, thank you, Brother um, Kweku, for that. Um, yeah. Oh. Ray, I think I would do more for activism, but I'm tired and feel alone as a blank, black single mum, hence why I started coming to forums like this. Okay. Thank you, Ray, for sharing that. Um, yeah. Saturday schools, Sandra, yeah, we've done the Saturday schools. We need to support the Saturday schools though, don't we? Um, by we, I mean, the bigger we, not just the recycled we, because after a while the recycled we is like, oh gosh, I'm out, <laughs> yeah. I'm just out, I'm just dry, you know. But let me tell you, on Saturday there was a Pan-African Sports Day at Battersea Park of Nubia Saturday School, Africa Bantu Saturday School, um, Alkiboland School of Excellence and some others. It was absolutely magnificent. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, it was brilliant. <laughs> it was. Oh, I missed that. I missed that. On that note, yeah, similarly, um, Cheryl Phoenix, who um, the group that I'm part of, the Penn Network, we supported her. Um, uh, we did some a minor fundraising for her a couple of years ago. But she's she's in Ghana at the moment, isn't she? Yes, she is. Yeah, doing some, some good work there. She set up a school. <clears throat> um, we're going to try and, uh, yeah, see if you know, how that could be supported as well, because it's, 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 it's everywhere, isn't it? And like you said, this, uh, Sister G, but this platform has enabled us to be closer in some ways, um, yeah. be aware of what far and near we are doing. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to, to raise <coughs> um, I've actually shared um, the information with Sister Sylvia in the hope that they could link low tide and yeah, that they could sort of link together. Mm. Yeah, that would be brilliant. In the same space. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm Michelle. Hello. Hi, Sonia. Um, yes. Yeah, I was just going to ask just a quick question. Um, with Olive, was she the only one in her family that was as active as she was? I mean, she was a force of nature. So I wasn't sure if she got this from like, say her parents were activists as well or you know she had brothers and sisters that were do you know I don't know to be to be honest with you about that that extent of it because it's always yeah it's, it's one of those where there might be an isolated situation where mm. um one is promoted and the other's just bending over backwards doing all this stuff and you don't know but yeah I literally mm. don't know and I also I'm not sh I'm not aware of a full-on biography um, of her, I, I don't know. I kind of hesitate to say firmly, but I'm not sure. Because again, it's like, it would be that the collective that you have is doing as much as they can. The family is still still around, but if people are, aren't, you know, necessarily um, have what it needs to, to put together a whole book, you know. Mm. Um, 
but it might be worth there's something to to consider in terms of um collection of essays or anything like that i'm 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 not aware of one but i'm just speaking. um i don't know but kwaku okay yeah, I was going to say uh, Brixton Libraries, maybe the other libraries in, in, in Lambeth do have uh, a book with uh, some local biographies. So she's featured in, in that book. That's uh, Brixton Library. Right. right, okay, thank you. Thank you. But again, it probably, it, 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 I'd be hard, it would be, it would be I doubt whether the family, the, the, what the extent of the contributions by her family would be accounted for in some of these um, cases. But anyway, thanks for that. Um, going back to something you just mentioned, uh, Sister Inzinga, about the, the, the attempted <laughs> throw away of, um, 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 was it Amy Ashwood Garvey? One of the Garvey, um, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. It's similar a case where Michael Abensetz is just, I, it, you just made me remember Michael Abensetz who gave us Empire Road and a number of the actors that we became familiar with like um, um, Desmond, um, Norman Beaton and so on because of course he wrote plays so that they could act and you know and sort of change that landscape that from when we were getting random um, racist programs on British TV. But again, his stuff is with, you know, family member all the way in Scotland and that whole, lots of archive is just, just there sit, being sat upon. I did try to ask when I saw her at the, um, the family at the funeral, if we could go and help, you know, try and figure out how to archive it, but that fell on deaf ears. Because can you imagine how many times this this happens with, with, with the family and, you know, archiving. What's interesting also to note, though, is for us to, whilst it's important to, to acknowledge the, the life, the personal legacies of the, the microscopics, you know, the bigger people, I also recommend you do this with your own families to get your, you know, who your, your parents, your grandparents, and, and they have some understanding of them because at some time, one of the grandchildren or whoever your children is going to come and be asking you questions, you're going to be like, I can tell you all about Olive Morris, but I know nothing about my grandmother or, you know, my own mother sometimes. So our personal narratives, our personal stories are really, really uh, important. Okay. I'd like to add something to that. Okay. So, okay Jane, I'd sure. like to add something to that. Sure, Regarding ahead. our personal heritage. Yes. That's the journey that I'm on. I'm actually doing that research. And I found my great greats on a plantation in Trelawney, Jamaica. Now I'm trying to find his parents and their parents. And it's quite an emotional journey, but it's worth doing, definitely. Mm. Mm, lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Sheba, for sharing that. Uh, Sister Nzinga? I really just, not to take anything away from Sister Olive, but just so I know we often run off and um, it doesn't get said, just to say to people that on the 1st of August, we have the Emancipation Rebellion um, March, if people would be interested to join it. It's in Brixton at the Max Roach Park, moving on to Windrush Square. Uh, starting at 10 30. Oh, thank oh. you. Thanks for that um, sister in Zynga. I think it was it was it's timely anyway for you to, to, to note that because that is also an ancestrally relevant uh, initiative. I do mark that they say it's not a march um, this time it's more the gathering <laughs> um, at uh, Max Roach Park. Thank you for sharing that with me earlier. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, um, and the reason why I remember it, because obviously I always do acknowledge March the 1st as emancipation, and in my version is that remembering that they, the enslaved Africans, once um, they received that call of uh, emancipation, didn't sit about what they did was they planned, they organized, how are we going to 
create villages? How are we going to organize politically, socially? What you know? What are what, what are we going to how what are we going to do as a community? So um, it's really important that we actually acknowledge this. This was this was something that they our ancestors uh, did, but also to mark that on that very day, <laughs> though. Um, I'm going to be double whammying because there's going to be a screaming screening at the BFI of Esther Anderson's A Warm December, which I have been trying to get happen for ages. And um, so it's actually going to take place at some uh, at the BFI on um, the 1st of August. It won't clash because you can do both because I am. And um, it's part of the African Od Odysseys program. It's a film that stars Esther Anderson as well as Sydney Poitier, who directed it. And I think if you have the, the will, go and see it. I'm certainly going to go and see it again. Uh, Sister Sandra. Yeah, I'd just like to, um, well, wonderful presentation. Oh, it's so moving. Thank you very much, Michelle. As always, it's just what you do really hits home and um, it's very moving. And we, we need to remember um, Sister Olive, um, 27, and to do all that she did, it's, it's remarkable. And thank you for just drawing our attention to that. But I just wanted to say, I finally agree with what you say about um, knowing your lineage and your ancestry, if you can, your, your, you know, who came. Um, I lost my parents in 2016 and Caribbean people are, notorious for not talking about themselves and families and and as a consequence pure confusion and for us for the children who are born here like myself you know I don't know Diana where my parents were from as such I only went there once and there's nothing but confusion and I'm left with with pieces to be picked up and it's really really confusing and um yeah so I, I urge people if they can um, something I'm do, I, I urge my students to do, um, for those who don't know, I'm a storyteller and I urge my, my students um, to, create, to, to create story boxes, memory boxes, and in those boxes they put, you know, pieces of their, their life stories in them. So you take out a picture, it tells you a story, you take out, uh, I don't know, anything and you take, and, and you can change the the artifacts from as you go along and um, the boxes can be a shoe box it could be a, a some kind of trunk but I think it's so important we, we, we do that one of the oldest things I, I, across there at the moment I've got is um is a jewelry box and um and it's got cowdery shells on it and as a kid I just loved that box but I had no idea where it came from in the house or anything and I have a feeling my my godmother it comes from Nigeria my godmother um she went to uh, from Ghana she went to um she went to um, Nigeria very young a young woman and and taught that's a whole different there's a massive <clears throat> story about there about this group of Guyanese women who left Guyana in the 60s and went to Nigeria and, and taught and um, before independence and everything, it's just amazing. My godmother was one of these people. But this jewelry box, I think, I keep looking at it, and I'm thinking that had to come from her. She's still alive, thank God, and I need to find out the story, but now, you know, with this or what's going on, it's a bit crazy. But I'm just saying, please, 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 people, um, if you can, trace your ancestry, that late, that sister who could trace her ancestry back to her a grandmother as, as a slave. I mean, sad it though it was, at least we have a history and it's so important to do that. And I could go on and on and I can't stress enough. Please, please, if you can trace your family's history. And that's why we're so disjointed as a people. And I know my parents, you know, if, you know, when I think about it, I would ask my parents about what it was like coming here and they wouldn't say, but I know what it was like because I was born here. And I know these people and after the football, we all know, <laughs> you know, you know, oh don't, because I'm a football supporter and it just hurt, breaks my heart to see how the players have been treated and all the rest of it. But and that's why I have a friend, I'm, not, I'm going on a bit, but I have a friend who would not support England. She didn't care. She will not support them ever, ever, ever. And now this is why. But do, do you see that that's going off the point? But I'm, all I'm saying is people, please gather up your, your family histories. 
um, because we, we, you know, we don't have a la language we have is English, you know, and, you know, but we have so many, we have so much. And that's why they try to mash us up all the time, because we're a mighty people. Yeah, all the things I agree. We've gone through, we're yeah. still here. And that is, that is part of it. And I'm, you know, I've been at doing all this for so long, tired, tired. Mm. And I um, met myself and my sisters. We've been doing all this for forever, mm. forever, forever. Mm. And um, it's, it was a rude awakening yesterday for those boys to wake up and see all the... <laughs> I don't know if it sounds just frozen, if it sounds just frozen or if my system is going down. But anyway, um, it looks as though everybody's frozen. So it might be me on my own. did you um, research the information on, say, your great-grandparents? What, what, where did you go to find that information? You mean, you mean Sheba? Sorry? It was Sheba. Oh. Yeah, Sheba, not me, darling. <laughs> Listen, oh. I, I don't even talk about I don't even know my grandparents. But it's Sheba. Please ask Sorry. Sheba. Sorry, Sheba. 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 Okay. Um, Sistrin, first I went to a few um, lectures that were being held in the community by people who were doing research and I collected a lot of materials. And then what I did was I did a plan, um, starting with here in the UK, I joined Ancestry. They mm -hmm. had um, a free trial thing. I, I joined that and then when the free trial ran out, I paid up the subscription um, monthly. And so I found, I was able to go on their website because Ancestry, which is the record office at Kew Gardens, actually has a lot of the documents from the Caribbean. Oh. A lot of the stuff were shipped back here to England when they so-called made us independent, you know? Mm -hmm. so I started with them. And I got, um, I managed, I used my grandmother's name. I knew my grandmother because I grew up with them till I was 10 years old in Jamaica. So because I had her name, I was able to start with her. And I knew my auntie's name, which is her children and my mother. I used their details to confirm that it's the right person that I had. And so once I found her, my granny, I then was able to look for her mother, which I found. It took me months, mm. but eventually I found my granny's mother, who is my great grandmother. Then it took me about another few months again to find her marriage certificate. So that way I oh. found who my, grand, my great grandfather mm -hmm. was. Then I used that marriage certificate and I found their death certificate which again confirmed that I was onto the right persons. My great, great grandfather, I used his name, went back into the ancestry archives again. And that's when I found him as a nine year old child on a plantation in Trelawney. So I then I ordered, I joined as a reader at the archives that allowed me to have access to more of this stuff. So what I did was I ordered the ledger for that plantation. When I got there, it was waiting for me. It was huge, it was about that big. And it took me the whole day to find him. But eventually I found him, he was nine years old on this plantation. By the time I found him though, the, the archives were closing that day. So I couldn't even look any further, but I quickly scribbled it down and I copied what I could came away with that and I, that's the information I've been using to to go further and further in so till now I've got the great great I've got their names both the on the my grandmother's father's mother mother's mother and father's mother I've got both their names now mm -hmm. so the next time I get some time and of course COVID stopped a lot of the things because the archives was closed mm -hmm. but they've reopened now and what I'm doing now is I've got two other people involved who are interested in it. 
and we're making some links in Jamaica because a lot of the physical stuff is still in the Caribbean. I'm also looking for someone in Trinidad and someone in Dominica as well. But it's, it's very time consuming. But once you've got the names and you know which part of the Caribbean they're from, you just have to be prepared to put the time in. It's <clears> the time. It's very time consuming, yeah. but very rewarding. Well, very yeah. rewarding. I found out a lot about my great great grandmother, and that explained to me why I am the way that I am. <clears throat> it really showed me who I was because there's things that I do which people think, why do you do that? You know, and your heart's too big, you're too this, you're too that, but it's her DNA. Mm -hmm. Because when people used to run away from the plantations, they used to run to her in Montego Bay, Mount Salem, she was, and she would put them up and give them food, clothes and shelter to get them on their feet and get them started. And she was my grandmother's mother, my great, great grandmother. And I have a lot of her in me, you know, so, Finding out about our ancestors kind of give us that explanation as well. It's like it gives us some root to hold on to. It, it, they, they throw up explanations that we don't even know are there, you know, because we as a people, we're very disjointed, aren't we? The way they've separated us and they split us on the islands and they used to punish us by sending us away from our family. Mm -hmm. We're very disjointed. So it's, yeah. it's good to have that information to really tap into, to see what foundation we're really coming from. Mm. And I'm going to oh. carry on doing it. I'm actually <laughs> going to go to Jamaica. I'm not finished. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to find them. Watch me. Wow. Thank you. Oh, thank great. you so much for that. I had no idea where to start. Yeah. And it just sounds I will help you, thank you. I will help you. I will help you. I'm happy to help you. Um, I'll give you my details and I send you some information that you can. Oh, thank you. Great. Yeah, Wonderful. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, this has been absolutely a wonderful. Um, I'm mindful of the time. Mm. Um, I've still got to run out. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks, everybody, for being on. And for those of you who have stayed on, I know some of you are just in the background doing your thing. I recognize some of you still. Sister, um, Sister Cheryl, hello. Um, Chukawanga, hello. And oh, hi, Cheryl. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Um, so very much looking forward to seeing you on, well, soon, because there'll be um, the, the workshop, the PASCF workshop that's on Friday. I can't even remember all the things. But anyway, <laughs> do some of you, if you can, come to the River Ritual, because that's a very special um, time and experience and um, it does something else to, to the psyche and some of you here have already done joined it and it's just something that I think is really needed uh, in our time now you know ritual gathering um, as African uh, people thank you and um, brother Song Sondai for putting your camera on <laughs> yeah the one in the background there so yeah thank you so much uh, whatever you're doing have a brilliant evening and let's give sister y'all a big round yeah, big up. <laughs> thank you so much everybody <laughs> wonderful to see you. good night everybody thank you thank you, thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. bye bye, bye. bye. Peace, love.